Welcome back to another video vlog. So this is our sixth episode of doing this. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. For those of you who are returning viewers and all of our new guests, thank you for stopping in and checking us out. This is week four of week 12 on our training program, and I'm in my in pursuit to get my abs visible. So that's what we're doing here. I'm trying to lose weight. So is Richard, and we're going along with that week to week and doing our weigh-ins and everything else. So all right. Uh, last last night, we actually left off talking about dieting, and uh, we're going to pick up right there from what we discussed yesterday. And uh, over my time of doing this, uh, this is a lot of personal experience, and these are our own personal opinions, so take it for what it's worth. But like I was saying yesterday, I noticed that if I'm doing a diet, I find it way easier if I just stick to my diet and I don't have cheat meals. Like if I plan my cheat meals... If I think about my cheat meals, oh yeah, if I start planning them, I start thinking about them. Once I start thinking about them, I start craving them. Once I start craving them, I start getting severe hunger pains, and then I just become overwhelmed with the thought of having something different. And even though I know it's going to hurt my stomach and it's not worth eating it, I mean, because it, it really isn't, it's just, it becomes overwhelming. So if I do not plan them and if I stay away from them, I, I'm way more successful on my diet and it just frees my mind up from being so overwhelmed with the thought of having to eat something like that. It's like, my analogy is like, if you're trying to stop smoking, you don't give a smoker a pack of cigarettes every Sunday and be like, here you go, enjoy it, you know, but try to quit the other six days of the week. You, you, you just stop, you take them from them and you let them stop and detox and get off of it. So that's how I view this. Now, again, this is my personal experience. Some people flourish with having cheat meals and schedule cheat meals and they need that. But for me personally, I find it just, it hurts me more than it helps me. Yeah. Like for me, the, the meal planning itself is what really helps. Like when we plan meals out that we're doing, but uh, like where you end up like sometimes starting off with like chicken and rice or something very basic, like I can handle that for maybe a day or two. But then after that, I start to have the meal with me, but be like, it's like, it's not enjoyable and I'll end up veering off. So I got to make the meal enjoyable. I got to have something that is easy for me to eat and I'm going to enjoy eating, even though it's still like a quote unquote diet meal kind of thing. So like right now we're doing like the ground, like ground beef and uh, rice with a little bit of beef stock. Like I enjoy that meal. It makes it a lot easier to eat. It's not dry like chicken breast would be and chicken breast and rice is a staple for a lot of people like that's their go-to thing and mm -hmm. the ones that are able to do it like that's more power to you like i just i struggle with that and if i'm struggling on eating the meal it's going to take me a lot less time for me to decide like you know what I, I'm, I'm gonna get something else yeah. and then i just end up freaking having the meals there just stockpiling me going like yeah yeah, yeah I, I i ate it <laughs> yeah, so so more along the line what you're talking about, not not so much because you start off talking more like about prepping the food that makes it easier for you, and you can kind of start off doing something more strict like chicken and rice, but that fades off. So, what I like to do when I'm helping people lose weight is I like to ask them what what are foods you naturally eat and you normally eat in your day to day, and then from there I I, I determine like okay, you like more sweeter things or you like more savory and more salty things, and if people like more of the salty savory things, then. You use stuff like chicken broth and chicken stock or beef stock or beef broth, and then you allow them to use certain seasonings that give them that flavor that they don't feel like they're missing out. If they like hearty food, then you you gear that diet towards foods that replicate more of what they eat to get them used to dieting. And then other people who like sweet foods, you start off with sweeter items, fruit, Greek yogurts, uh, artificial sweeteners, stuff like that, that gives them that that joy of having something sweet on their palate without going off the rails and everything. And then I found that that helps people get used to dieting because the biggest issue is you can't take someone off the street and then put them on this hardcore diet and expect them to stay like stick to it. It's just nine out of 10, whenever they have motivation and they are looking at themselves and they're full and they just kind of needing a big meal, they have the motivation to be hungry until they get hungry. And then they have to eat the same thing over and over again. Then they get like, Bleh, this isn't, this isn't doing it for me. So I like to gear their diets more towards what they kind of more normally eat until they get used to that structured style of dieting. And then we can start kind of refining it from there and kind of more detailing it and making it more personal and then pulling out what's hurting them and putting in things to replace that that's going to help give them their best results and their benefits while keeping them to it. And again, some of these people, 
they, they need that cheat meal and something to look forward to. And others, if you give them that cheat meal, then it consumes them and then it overwhelms them. And then they, they just dwell on that so much that they just end up falling short. But don't get me wrong, even people that I allow them to eat closer to the foods that they like, whether it's savory, salty, or sweet, or whatever, and you try to give their diet the best that, that you can towards that, some people just don't have the mentality to be consistent and repetitive, and they, they just want variety. So there's other options for that too, and try to switch it up. But that I find that a lot of people become overwhelmed with too much variety. So they, they like, oh, I want variety, but then you give them variety, but then they get overwhelmed and they don't know what to pick or for what meals or what to cook or what to eat at certain times. Or they just overall get overwhelmed with having to cook so much food all the time. Every time I have to eat, I have to cook every time. Well, if you just prep two, three days at a time, you don't have to cook all the time and spend so much time in the kitchen. Well, I can't eat the same thing every time, so I have to eat something different. So I have to cook something every time I eat. So those people, they, they become overwhelmed with the variety and the option of having to cook so much. So the, everyone has a crutch and a hiccup. It's just a matter of finding what your Achilles heel is and then approaching in a way that's going to lead you to success. And like I tell everybody, the diet that's going to work the best for you is the one that you're going to stick to that you enjoy eating. Even if that's if it fits your macros, cutting calories, calorie counting, um, keto, intermittent fasting, uh, carnival, vegetarian, vegan, doesn't matter. Like if you could find something that you can legitimately enjoy eating and control your calories, that's going to be what works the best for you, honestly. Yeah. Like, like you're saying, I just, I like sticking to the meals like that I'm going to eat because it does make it easier for me. And if I'm going to kind of pull some of the flavor out of it, and things like that. I got to be selective on what that is because like, I will start to veer from, from my personal self. I know I'll start to veer off a little bit easier and I don't want to do that. So I try to keep everything still within the ranges that I need to, but again, making it agreeable with me, like you're saying, and keeping it something that I'm going to enjoy eating overall. And like, being able to do that and also still see the results and the progress that I'm looking for, it, it does make it a lot easier than if you're just forcing a meal every time you, you got to eat or however, like that's going to go. Like if, if I'm not going to enjoy what I'm doing in that process of like of eating, and that's going to become a big part of the whole process itself, mm -hmm. it, it is going to make it a lot more difficult for me to stick to. And then you like, like I'll break off and veer and start doing my own thing and my results will suffer. And then I just kind of like, when you get to that point, it's what I think causes a lot of people to stop and, and give up. Uh, and that's, that's why I, again, like trying to keep up with the meals the way we are is helping me a lot. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the thing too, um, about like, here's a little trick that I learned for myself. Like when you're on a diet, um, if you prefer fats, right, then you prefer more savory foods. If you like carbs, you like sweeter foods. But also keep in mind, if you want to have a, a I'm air quoting here, a balanced diet, um, I want to do carbs and fats in the same meal, even if you're eating carbs and fats in the same day, like to make your meals more interesting and make them more enjoyable, have a meal that has like avocados and meat or peanut butters and stuff like that. And then have another meal that has no fat in it at all, but it's all protein and carbohydrates. Like alter what you're eating for your fuel source, whether it's fat or carbs per meal throughout the day, if you're allowed enough fat to be able to do that. And then eventually you're gonna figure out the things that you enjoy eating more over than the other. Like, man, the carb meals just, I just don't like them. Or man, the fat meals, they're just the, the ones with like the creamy stuff. I, I'm just not enjoying that. And then it can kind of help you weed out more of what you don't enjoy eating day to day because you're going to find meals that you're like, oh, I look forward to this. And you're going to find meals that you're like, ooh, I'm dreading this. And when you find a dreaded meal, don't don't suffer through it and don't fight through it. Just just replace it with something you know that you're going to eat and stick to it. Don't don't force your way through there. So like if you enjoy eating eggs, eat eggs. What time of day, whatever time of day you want, if that's something you're going to stick to and everything. And I could go into more depth about what you can eat and how much you can eat and how much you should be eating for this and the other. Um, but that, that's for another video and it's already too late in the video to get into that. But, you know, ultimately it, it's just about finding the foods that agree with your stomach too, because you, you can get away with eating pizza and burgers and hot dogs, but if your stomach gets twisted and you get loose bowels and you get stomach aches from that, chances are you, you shouldn't be eating that, but reducing the amount of food that you're eating is better than just continuously overeating bad foods. And that's a start, you know, like there's people out there that will just pull their calories back first. 
and then let them get used to feeling a little bit of hunger. And then from there is whenever we'll start tweaking it and changing it and then getting more on a stricter diet. Yeah, like for me, like my biggest struggle right now is actually just eating bananas. Like I've never really been a big fan of the fruit itself. So uh, that's part of my meals, though. And again, like I'm getting used to it and it's not as bad as it was when I uh, first started. Uh, and it, I, I just, it's something with the texture on it, <laughs> uh, but it, it has it, the benefits of it though. They do outweigh the, like me not eating it. So I will, like, I don't want to say like suffer through it, but, uh, I just, it takes me a little bit to, to get through that, that one little portion of that particular meal. So why don't you make banana chips, cut them up and dehydrate them and make banana chips and eat those. You could throw them in the oven and dehydrate them like jerky and you can make little banana chips and stuff like that. So that's something else. That's another form of the same thing, just slightly different. Um, and, and guys, like uh, here's the thing too, like we're, we're not fitness gurus. We're, we're, we're not like some crazy experts that's going to tell you this is the way to do it and blah, 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 blah. We just use common sense with experience over the years of helping people and then me doing this myself. So like I said, everything we talk about in these videos, take it for what it's worth with a grain of salt. And whenever you hear information like this, don't drop everything that you've known and done up to this point, especially if it's working for you. Stick to what you're doing if it's working. And don't look left to right for another easier answer or path. Keep going the way that you're going. And then whenever you run out of road, then start looking around for another direction to head in. So I just want to be very clear about that because I see a lot of people get caught up and stuff like that, you know. All I'm saying, though, is uh, you can kind of speak for yourself on the fitness guru thing because people have seen how I look in these videos and it screams fitness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anyone's going to come to you for knowledge, you know, if people need knowledge, they're going to come straight to you for it. So, but yeah, I, I think that's going to wrap it up for at least this conversation. And maybe next time we'll go a little bit deeper into like food selection and choices and everything like that. If people want to hear that or are kind of interested about that. So, but man, it's it, my back and shoulders are coming along a little bit right here. They're definitely popping out a lot more than what they did. If you go back to the beginning videos. Yeah, for sure. So Get your calves uh, going too. Still fat, still gross, but not nearly as fat and not nearly as gross. <laughs> right here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it whenever this edits because the, the light kind of washes me out. But if you look at my oblique area, I think you can see a rib. Whenever I switch over to the, the rear tricep right here, I'm pretty sure you can see a rib. Watch, here it comes. Oh, there it is. You see it? Yeah. Oh, right there. I don't know if you'll see it on the video, but well, from the screen we're watching that, you, you can see it. There's a bump. <laughs> so, but yeah, I've been putting in hard work and everything. So what what is your weight right now? How much do you weigh? Uh, as of today, I'm at 277. So I'm actually down a little bit right now, which is good. Yeah, that is good. I haven't weighed myself since last Sunday. So I'm going to weigh again on this Sunday and see what it's doing and hopefully everything goes right so but that's going to be it for me on this video all right so um thank you guys for watching and joining us if you made it this far in the video i'd like to finish it with a little bit of a positive note you know if you guys can find joy grab onto it and hold it as long as you can if you have negative people in your life don't let them drag you down to their level and remember there's always going to be someone out there that's going to try to steal your joy or thunder and do not let them take that from you and stay around positive, like-minded people, and you'll be far more successful than being around negative people. So, and that's it for this one. And uh, just remember, when you're in the gym, if there is no agony, there is no bragging. Until next time. Yep. Bye.